Hello, I'm Chris Sarley, Investment Research Analyst at Fund Calibre, and today we're, I'm delighted to be joined by Vincent Ropers, Manager of the Elite Rated TBY's Multi-Asset Growth Fund. Thank you for joining us, sir, Vincent. Thanks so much for having me. Um, let's start, obviously, with the fund and where it's positioned. It's in the Investment Association flexible sector, so, so the allocation can be pretty much anything you like, um, with some boundaries, obviously. But given the rough start to the year for investors, how flexible, how much have you made use of that, that ability to sort of move around in the portfolio? And in terms of the asset allocation, yes, thanks, Chris. It, it's definitely a very good question because, as you, as you say, well, it, it's been uh, quite a, a turbulent start of the year. Um, we started the year uh, expecting recovery in the economy, recovery in in markets to to continue. Then the invasion of Ukraine happened, um, shifting the focus towards uh, inflation which then became concerns about recession. Um, you can add some uh, political uncertainty to the, to the mix as well, uh, particularly here in, in the UK. Um, so it has been a difficult environment to, to navigate. Um, what we did, however, all, all that being said, the past couple of months, we've been a lot more active from an asset allocation standpoint. So, um, and it's not because our view on the macro economy has, has changed, but there again, it is where we see value emerging. So we've been adding um, uh, quite substantially to our fixed income um, exposure in, in the portfolio, about three, three and a half percent or, or so. And that's on the back of uh, the very uh, difficult first half for fixed income markets, the worst performance uh, for, for bonds global bonds in in decades really and when you saw yields on us or uk 10-year bonds doubling in the space of of six months so we think that there is now a lot more attraction in in the yields that we're seeing in in the fixed income market we've also been adding to floating rates so there in the broad bond uh universe uh, we particularly like floating rates which are loans in effect, um, but where the rates move in line with uh, what the benchmark rates are, are doing. So that provides some inflation uh, protection. So we've been adding to, to that part of the market. And also from valuation standpoint, we've been adding to private equity. We think private equity has sold off quite aggressively um, because uh, in the investment trust uh, sector, the discounts have widened quite a lot because investors replay in their mind what we saw in the great financial crisis of 2008, nine, um, where a lot of those trusts uh, had portfolios that weren't performing well. Uh, they were uh, very indebted. Um, so a lot of those trusts um, uh, headed into, into troubles, but we think the situation is very different uh, currently. Um, the operationally, the portfolios are performing uh, very well. Debt is well under control, so there isn't a lot of leverage. And discounts on uh, some of the trusts that we own at 35 to 45% seem unjustified uh, to us. So we've been adding to that uh, area. And the last thing that we've done just over the past few weeks, we've um, uh, built up our dried powder, so our cash level. Which was around uh, or two and a half to three percent at the start of the year is now four and a half percent, and that's on the back of the the strong performance that we've seen really uh, since the beginning of the summer in uh, in risk assets. So we've seen quite a quite a good recovery. We think it's probably a bit too early to uh, call the end of the bear market, and we're probably going to see more volatility over the next few weeks or months. So we want to have some dry powder ready to, um, to deploy uh, as and when we see uh, opportunities over the next few weeks. Will you be looking to sort of dip in? Because I mean, obviously inflation has been a buzzword for a number of months. And we're now sort of at this sort of tipping point where there's talk of inflation peaking and maybe the threat of recession is now looming much larger i mean how do you sort of get through those sticky periods and and you, you mentioned the cash holding there would you would you look to drip feed that in at some point yes yeah, so we, we we will definitely uh drip that in at, at some point i think the the focus has now has now shifted uh, uh, shifted as you uh, as you're alluding to whether inflation is peaking or not uh 
I don't know, and I don't think anyone will will know. It's likely to remain sticky for uh, for months to to come. But what uh, has probably peaked for the time being are investors' expectations of uh, of inflation, and that for us as investors uh, ourselves is what matters. So it's figuring out what's priced in into the market. And the shift is now very much on recession, as central bankers have made it quite clear. The way we look at our portfolio entering this, this very difficult period is that there are several ways you can protect your portfolio in a recession or stagflation and environment. Um, the first one is to have defensive assets. So um, we have a number of absolute return strategies in our portfolio around eight percent eight nine percent um we also own some gold which we think is a good hedge against uh, inflation and an increase in in risk aversion as i mentioned we've got cash um we've got fixed income which while for years uh, really hasn't provided any downside protection given how low yields were, we think now that has changed with yields being uh, being higher, there is a margin of safety now and we would expect fixed income to um, to provide protection if, uh, if equities were to sell off. Um, and another defensive area we've got exposure to is in the infrastructure. Uh, space so there it is defensive because the income streams uh, are often inflation linked um, and are quite predictable so it's quite easy to to model um, you've got some visibility and investors tend to like that in a period of of recession um, so defensive assets is is one then secondly I would say the focusing on the quality of the assets um that we own so we always do that we always look for the quality managers that then go and look the, the best assets they can they can find out there but it is going to be increasingly important in the current environment um then uh, valuations is going to be increasingly important uh, as well. Um, so investing in things where you know that you've got a sufficient margin of safety, um, and that has um, proved very valuable in the first six months of, of this year, when you've seen value equities uh, outperforming the growth equities, is because you've got that uh, margin of safety uh, embedded there. Um, and if we look at a sector that I mentioned earlier, like floating rates, for example, we think the the fundamentals remain quite uh, quite strong in that sector, and a lot of them are uh, backed by physical assets. So there is even in a case of default, uh, the managers uh, can get the the capital back, um, and you're getting north of 10% yield on some of those uh, strategies that, that we own, which we think uh, from a valuation standpoint is, uh, is particularly uh, appealing. And the last point I would say on how to try and protect the portfolio in a recession is uh, something that we, we do is to look for idiosyncratic strategies. So, it's very difficult to find strategies that are going to be completely uncorrelated, but we are looking for managers that um, are trying to be masters of their own uh, destiny, really, and try to invest in, create a portfolio that should behave quite differently from the rest of the market and shouldn't be too impacted by um, big macroeconomic um um dynamics um so for example in the equity space that would be activist managers um that invest in in companies and then go and try and implement um uh, convince the board uh to to implement changes that then create value uh for for the share price or private equity um a sector that i mentioned already but there again uh the managers are really they are sitting on the board, they invest for the long term, and we feel that they're, they're, they have more control, um, which means that uh, the performance of their portfolio is going to look quite quite different from um, 
the, the broader market. Obviously, we've, we've sort of covered quite a bit there. So um, I just want to touch on a, a couple of points just before we, we finish. So firstly, um, in terms of investment trusts and alternatives, you, you sort of explain there how they've been useful sort of sources of alternate return. Do, do you envisage that bucket of the portfolio increasing in the next few months? And Yes, yeah, so on, on the investment trust uh, first, we always own uh, between 60 and 80% um in investment trust and that has been the case since uh, the the fund was launched in 2004 so our focus is really on investment trust we at the start of the year we were towards the lower end um mm. of that allocation so towards the 60 percent and that allocation has now increased and it is a function of um well some stock specific ideas like uh in the uh the floating rates area uh with added positions in vpc specialty lending for for example so um but also a function of valuations the discounts generally have widened across sectors in investment trust since the start of the year um which is what you would expect in a risk off environment um so investors run for run for the the exit uh, sell their holdings which means that the discounts will will widen um so that means that for us they are looking more more attractive um and an example there is we have switched it, switched some of our uh, um equity exposure from open-ended funds to investment trusts, for example, because uh, uh, for similar strategies, let's say similar portfolios, we sell an open-ended fund at what is par uh, by definition, and then we can buy uh, the equivalent in investment trust world um, at an attractive discount. So we think that is quite a quite an attractive thing. So yes, I would I would expect uh, investment trust allocation to continue uh, creeping up. So it's now around uh, 67, 68 percent of our portfolio. Um, obviously, we need to be aware of liquidity uh, as well. That's why we've got open-ended uh, funds. But um, if the discounts continue to uh, to widen, we will be adding to our exposure. Um, Thank you. And if you'd like to learn more about the TBY's Multisset Growth Fund, please visit fundcaliber.com.